So refresh, the opportunity to refresh your data center with, with, with the hardware I, I spoke about. Um, that there is a challenge around the replacement of containers and the cost. And if we have to you know, take that life cycle over a five year versus a 15 year, and if there's a refurbishment opportunity, um, there's some risk in, in that it's a new technology. Um, there, there's um, code issues that I, that I mentioned earlier in compliance. Um, uh, there's also issues with the container itself with that much heat inside a single unit and managing the outside humidity and temperature and if we're going to see any uh, skinning effects on the units. Um, there's secondary protection of assets that's come up as an opportunity. So um, from a fire protection system, um, in, in, instead of having a fire protection in an entire data center with an EPO in an entire data center, each individual unit is now protected from its adjacent unit um, and it's contained. So if there's a fire inside the unit, we're trying to minimize the combustibles and flammable materials inside, but if there's a fire inside the unit, it's contained within it. So we just need smoke detection. We may be able to eliminate fire protection. And um, so big advantages there as well. Um, they are seen as unoccupied spaces. So there's no makeup area inside them for people to be in there. We're running permitting processes on them. Um, and in just regards to the scale, <coughs> excuse me, our Chicago data center is going to install 100 to 200 container units uh, on the ground floor of the data center and then traditional co space above. Um, and each, each unit is anywhere from 300 to 600 kilowatts uh, per container. So some of our design and the reliability perspective, uh, a lot of talk here around the cloud and the data center is the physical man manifestation of the cloud. And as we build reliability at the data center level, it, it actually costs us. It costs us in time to market, it costs us in dollars because we've redundant components, and it costs us in energy efficiency. If we look at a tier one from the Uptime Institute's classification data center versus a tier four, it's about a 20 to 25 percent energy inefficiency on a tier four data center because we can't write the redundancy in at the application level. So there's a lot of um, opportunity from an energy efficiency perspective in the applications and pushing the reliability up the stack. Um, and we're not talking about two data centers. One will be called to the second. It's a distributed architecture where you've got maybe 10 instances across and if you lose one, that load is then distributed across the other nine. Um, so reliability, I think, needs a, a, a big focus and moving forward, building out data centers that are, are N system versus N plus one or two N systems, a lot more energy efficient. And the other uh, option to that is that um, when we build out containers today, one of, one of the reasons they become viable is density. Putting a single server in a container is very different to putting two or 3,000 servers in a container. Um, so the container costs what it does, no matter if there's one or 2,000, the more you can fit in, the lower your costs are. Um, and that, that density is now driving the opportunity um, to, to use containers and, and to deploy them. And the, the, the challenge here, though, is the reliability, because if we want to build reliability into a container, it, diminishes, it re reduces the density, because you're taking up valuable space and components for the reliability. Um, so again, I, I think pushing reliability into the application level is, is very important and critical to our industry. So that's all the information I have uh, on the slide deck. I'd like to open it up to any questions. Go ahead. How would you track the solutions to IBM proposes? Say again, sir. Track with IBM. How would you track the solutions to IBM? Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm not totally familiar with IBM other than what they publicized. Uh, but I do believe that the idea of modular, portable, scalable data centers is key to the, to the industry's future. And, and that's an approach we're taking at Microsoft. And we're taking a slightly different approach from some of uh, the other industry leaders and competitors, and is that we want to collaborate with the industry. You know, we may have the three smartest guys in the room, but we don't have the 3,000 or the 3 million, and there's a lot of innovation happening in this area that we want to leverage. Um, so we're partnering and opening up to the industry. That's why I'm here today to talk about containers as a possible solution, not just for Microsoft, but for our customers as well. Any other questions? Yeah, Question was: Is the software licensing model the same for a container as it would be for a data center? I don't see why not. To be honest. Just wondering if there's an incentive for adopting container-based server. The incentive for adopting container-based data center or server deployments 
is the cost, the time to market, the energy efficiency, the flexibility from an up or down perspective of the capacity. So the amount of compute we can deploy, it, any of these technologies can be taken into a data center. Um, what, what, what the data center lacks is a, the scalability, um, the ability to deploy facilities with the servers that we're deploying, the applications that sit on top of the hardware, um, that doesn't really need to change. Um, it's scalable, it, it's more scalable from a data center perspective because you're, you're taking your facility now and you're deploying it at the same time as we're deploying the hardware. Did that answer your question? It doesn't? No, it does. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I got one for you here. Uh, does this mean that if you, not only yourselves, but other people in the container business, are you seeing a more homogenous application, a more homogenous uh, supply of servers into the data center market, not sort of the freewheeling choice of this box, that box, whatever each department in a company wants to see? So that is actually our goal moving forward is that and the application developers and the application owners are, are isolated from the hardware selection. And that the hardware selection is, is based on the performance. There's, there's you know, earlier was mentioned whether your bottleneck and is, is a CPU, your memory, your I.O., whatever that bandwidth limitation is. So the hardware selection we're trying to isolate. And as we build a data center OS or, or, or an application that runs in a virtual environment, we want to disassociate the application from the hardware itself. So the hardware selection um, today is a more homogenous in, in the container-based system, and, and, and that unit of compute is becoming much larger. So um, those individual containers, whether they're two or 3,000 servers or whatever amount of petabytes of storage, is really homogenous today. I think that will change over time, but if we uh, disassociate the selection of the hardware with the application, and do it based on performance of the application relative to um, those those limiting factors on CPU, memory, I/O, and so on. And that's the selection criteria, not an individual platform. And we can move to a more homogenous environments. Any other questions? I've got one. Over here. Here. Um, uh, you didn't specifically call it out on your list of pros and cons, but what uh, uh, interesting your perspective on the management. Uh, overall IT management benefits or challenges that containers potentially offer? Um, so that, that's a good point in that um, today when we buy servers, the management of those servers is isolated from the building management systems. They don't talk to each other. Um, so there's more effective ways to utilize the power or even the airflow and the cooling systems. That, that's not, not really utilized today in the data centers that we're deploying. In a container, now the facilities is, is, is totally embedded with the with the hardware itself, and it's it's built and optimized to that platform. And so as we're deploying containers, we're we're starting to link with there's a, a the, the BCM, IPMI, and, and DCMI, which is data center management interface that we're working on, so that we can start to look at server utilization, and we can use VFDs, centralized fan VFDs, instead of having fans and in individual servers. And now your utilization is, it drives the speed of those fans centrally. So the building management systems and the operating systems for the data center and the applications are starting to merge. What about IT staff? IT staff, um, you know, you previously you had IT staff and facility staff. They're starting to merge. They're, they're, they're becoming one over time. And that's the same at Microsoft. We, all the IT staff that we have supporting our data centers are, there's a, there's a mixture of mechanical and electrical engineers and, and, and application developers and, and what you just start to see is server engineers. So how many people are, are planning here to building data center for their company? <coughs> you know, we, that, that's a lot of growth. I would, I would urge that as you plan for those data centers, you look at future form factors and include containers uh, as you, you put together the scope for your data center. Okay, thank you very much.